the first half, Notre Dame trailing Wisconsin-Milwaukee 12-9, 9.55 to play in the first half. Some of you will be watching that. Others will be seeing in Oklahoma City, Utah State, and Kansas. The Jayhawks with a 13-8 lead, about five minutes gone in the first half. And others still getting underway. You will see Colorado State and Duke. That one about ready to start in Salt Lake City. The fourth game of the night that we'll be, uh, we'll be heading for will be the Tulsa Golden Hurricane against the Dayton Flyers. That'll be in the land of the quick turn style. Spokane and Washington. Those of you ticketed for that game will be watching the Notre Dame-Wisconsin-Milwaukee game until we get you to the tip of that game. It all happens after this message and a word from your local station. Lead at 13-8 inside Collison. Heinrich. Michael Lee, the sophomore from Portland, Oregon. A rebound through the hands of Langford, collected by Penninger. The Yankees of Utah State from the Big West. Brown trying to go inside. Lee knocked it away, and they scramble for it with Kenniger losing it inside. And finally, it's reeled in by Graves, and here comes Heinrich the other way. Off to Langford, diving inside, and a foul. Mark Brown with a poor decision on the other end, taking it into traffic when there was nothing there. And what that led to was a Kansas fast break. At the free throw line is Langford. Kansas had a three and three start. This season has seen this Jayhawk team rated as high as number three and as low as number 20. Last year was so smooth with Simeon and Jeff Boshi and Drew Gooden. Simeon was a guy that they were looking for so much for this season. But he's out now and they've had to work with the short bench as you see Notre Dame tied with Wisconsin Milwaukee. But with Wayne Simeon in the starting lineup, Kansas and Roy Williams had the best starting lineup in America, just not much beyond that. And with Simeon out, Jeff Graves forced into the starting lineup where he has performed admirably, but that has put everyone else at a bit of a disadvantage. It has really shortened that bench and forced others to play minutes they otherwise would not have played. Kansas still does start three players that were in the final four a year ago. In a Long-range jump shot by Ronnie Ross in the game for the first time won't go. Heinrich, Blackford, skies and puts it in. Well-timed pass by Kirk Heinrich. And Langford finishing off nicely on the other end. And Kansas has their biggest lead tonight. In losing Drew Gooden and Jeff Boshi from last year's team, it wasn't so much who would replace them. It would be who would replace Wayne Simeon and Keith Langford on that Kansas bench. Last year, Kansas could score all five guys on the floor in the starting lineup and could bring guys in off the bench that could score. Well, January 4th is that date for the Jayhawks this year. They'll remember Simeon dislocated his right shoulder against UMKC. Watch his arm get caught in the net. And then the re-injury right there on the 24th of February against Texas A&M. Simeon again dislocates his right shoulder. And now he is out. He's practicing with the team. The surgery will happen in a couple of weeks as Graves throws it away. Torino Johnson has it. And that 1-2-2 two, two, three-quarter court pressure. It's been soft pressure, but that has really slowed Kansas down. Heinrich on Brown. Heinrich a terrific on-ball defender. Penninger for three. Rebound, Graves, and a foul is called inside. Nate Harris comes in and tries to make Graves for the first time. This is the Logan, Utah-based program in Utah State, the Yankees, Big West. The only way you get in in this conference is if you win the tournament. That's what Stu Morrell has had to do. That is really very difficult. People realize that really the whole season is wrapped up in that postseason tournament. Well, Utah State certainly capable of, of having won the Big West regular season title. They finished third to UC Santa Barbara and UC Irvine. But Stu Morrill not particularly concerned about that because he knew that his team had to win the tournament anyway in order to gain an NCAA tournament berth. Brown wheels in on Heinrich. Bounds, lost by the Aggies. And there you can see the great defense of Heinrich. Not only moving his feet, but the active hands as well. Heinrich, you can see quickness, moves his feet, stays in front, and just slaps that ball away and goes off Brown for the tournament. Utah State's turned it over six times. Kansas has turned it over once. The Jayhawks are shooting 54% from the floor. Miles on the bench with a couple fouls. Here's Lee. Kansas gets very good movement against this zone, but a bad pass by Nick Collison. You do not see that very often from him. Here come the Yankees. They're shooting 33% from the floor. 
Rebounding in the game, even at six. Ross dumps it inside, and Puvi caught it. Got the way. Got it. He's got two. Because he started his career at Utah. That's for Utah State. Has played in the NCAA tournament before. But he played for Rick Majerus. Brian Nash has checked in for the Jayhawks. by seven they've led by as many as nine this utah state team very well coached and very disciplined defensively the only problem they are not a great shooting team timeout with under 12 to play in the first half from oklahoma city Craig Gumbel and Clark Kellogg in New York as we take a look. Kansas with a 17-10 lead over Utah State. We'll get back to that game in just a moment. But first, at the RCA Dome in Indianapolis, Wisconsin-Milwaukee and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Notre Dame's lead is two in this game, but Wisconsin-Milwaukee came out strong tonight. Yeah, scrappy team that does a lot with their defensive pressure. Notre Dame has gotten a good contribution here in the first half from Torrin Francis, the outstanding freshman. And that's been able to weather this, well, actually been able to make up for the lack of a contribution from Matt Carroll. There Notre you see Francis with nine points for Notre Dame leading the Irish. Notre Dame's big problem tonight, if they've committed twice as many turnovers as Wisconsin-Milwaukee, 10 to 5. Well, Wisconsin-Milwaukee, again, with their pressure defense, they will turn you over if you aren't strong with the ball. And Notre Dame has fallen right into that pressure. And yet, despite the 10 turnovers, Greg, because of the inside play of Francis, they've got a four-point lead. All right. Meanwhile, Colorado State and Duke in Salt Lake City. And this game is just a one-point game, but it's still in the very early stages. What kind of chances does Colorado State have against Duke here? Well, again, the longer they kind of hang around and get shots to go and handle the ball, there's a turnover and Duke in transition. Dante Jones will get to the foul line. But Duke is a young team, a little nervous to start. But as they settle down and apply that defensive pressure, I look for them to get some easy scores and pull away gradually. All right, Clark, we'll keep tabs on all of these games for you. Let's get you back to Oklahoma City, Utah State, and Kansas. We rejoin Kevin Harlan and Jay Billis. And 44 is Chad Evans Oklahoma State. Offensive rebound by the Jayhawks. Michael Lee on the miss by Heinrich. Kansas in white, Utah State in blue. Brian Nash over Pettigrew for two. He's hit two in a row off the bench. Brian Nash from Carrollton, Texas for the Jayhawks. And Kansas, their biggest lead tonight of 11. Cardell Butler in the game, and he tried to feed inside. Evans ends up with it. Nelson couldn't do anything with it, and out of bounds it goes. Number two seed Kansas, number 15 seed Utah State. The Jayhawks have led by as many as 11, which they've got right now, 21 to 10. Utah State winning the Big West postseason championship. Jayhawks, the Big 12 regular season victors in the two seed. They are in the West region. Utah State switching their defenses up, going from man to zone, trying to take Kansas out of their fast break and secondary break. Put on a little one, two, two, three quarter court pressure, but it is so hard to stop Kansas because they are so efficient and get the ball down court so quickly. And by four, you see Duke there by three. Some of the scores roll in front of you with Wisconsin beating Weber State, the Big Ten with the win right there. And Missouri, another Big 12 team, along with Oklahoma winning and Kansas right now on top. They're 21 to 10. The scores along the way. Mark Brown from Tucson, Arizona. Working on Miles. Also on top, draws the defensive grades. Outside shot is put in a beauty by Cornell Butler from San Francisco. And that little drive by Nelson just enough to draw the defense off. Back to the 2-3 zone, another defensive switch by Stu Morrow. He's trying to give Kansas some different looks, see if they can slow the Jayhawks down, make them run some half-court offense. Langford trying to carve his way inside. And a Utah State foul. 
And this one goes on Mark Brown, the junior. And let's swing it over to Dwayne Ballant. Kevin and Jay, Utah State, you saw the signs being held up by the assistant coaches. What they do is Tim Durier and Don Verlin each signal in plays. Now, here's the catch. One's a dummy play, and one's the real play. And I guess that's the genius of the plan. Yeah. Mix them up a little bit. Tough to read. Well, those cards are a, a, an old trick used by Judd Heathcote and Marv Harshman. And those were things adopted by Mike Montgomery. Stu Morrow coached with Montgomery at Montana, but I have not seen the competing cards trying to throw off the opposing defense. Three on two, Langford just the other way and puts it down for the Jayhawks. Langford has eight, and that is a game-high eight for Kansas. Pettigrew has six for the Aggies. You know you've got smart players when they can figure out a signal system. They know one's a decoy and one's for real. Here's Chad Evans from Ogden. He's on top. Butler feeds to Brown. He shed the defense of Lee and back to Butler. Two-point attempt right here. Benninger trying to tap it back in and over the back. And a foul, and it's called inside. Keith Lankford, the lefty slasher. Great body control. Let's the defense fly by. He puts the brakes on. There's Charlene Taylor, Keith Langford's mom. And uh, kind of Jayhawk wear tonight, watching her son play. There's Keith, who has had a wonderful sophomore season for the Jayhawks. Penninger just picked up his first personal foul for the Aggies. I was a little surprised that Keith Langford didn't get more mention for all Big 12 this year. Had a terrific season, averaged over 15 points per game, and Shot over 50% from the field, yet he was only honorable mention all Big 12. Thought he should have been at least second team. He's only had a total of four free throws taken in this first half. Kansas 2 of 2, and Utah State 2 of 2. Here's Collison. Quiet so far, he's got four. Stays there, rebound by Spencer Nelson. Now to Cardell Butler. Over Heinrich, who got well in his way. And all of the shot. A fight for it, as you can see inside. And finally, Butler comes out with it. A fresh shot clock with which to work for Brown, and he'll reload the offense. Heinrich saved a basket. He is so good defensively. Go inside Penninger with an advantage on Collison. Collison comes up at the end and knocks it away. Here comes Aaron Miles, weaving his way down court into the clutches of Butler, and a foul called on. Cardell Butler, that is the first on him. Coach is always telling players to move their feet, and that's exactly what Kirk Heinrich does. He moved his feet, stayed in front of Cardell Butler, and was able to force a shot that was not the one Butler wanted to take. He wanted to get all the way to the rim, and Heinrich would not allow it. He and Collison, of course, had the chance to leave after last year. And you talked to Roy Williams about what these two seniors have meant, not just to the program, but to college basketball. And Eddie Sutton, I think, said it best for uh, most basketball fans, college basketball fans. And here are two kids that represent everything that you want your program to show. They stay the four years, they play hard, they're good citizens, and, and they leave with an education. And that is uh, something that I know Kansas very happy with, as they are with that tough point there by Collison, who's got six and gives the Jayhawks their biggest lead tonight of 13. Well, both Collison and Heinrich are winners, and there are quite a few Big 12 coaches that would love to go to their graduation just to make sure they leave. And there's Chad Evans at the other end. With that basket, by the way, he becomes the all-time leading scorer in the Big 12 Conference. As Graves goes tumbling head over heels out of bounds, Harris picks up his third, and this is a historic basket because he becomes the all-time scorer in the league. Now, the league is fairly new, going from the Big 8 to the Big 12, but nonetheless, he is atop the scoring list so far. And that was quintessential uh, Collison, using that second lane, not just giving up on the play and going right into the blockout, but working the lane and getting inside position for that slam dunk. Now, he is only nine points away from hitting 2,000 points in his Kansas career. He would join only two other players that have hit that mark, Danny Manning and Rafe LaFrance. Well, he's had a spectacular career. He's in the top five in scoring, rebounding, and block shots on the Kansas. Jayhawks on top, 27-15. Nick Collison coming up with a big two here. 
Tonight on The Late Show with David Letterman, don't miss Oscar nominee Queen Latifah, comedian Colin Quinn, and music from Lou Reed. That's tonight on Dave on CBS, America's most watched network. Kansas from the field is shooting 55%. Utah State shooting 30% from the floor. Kansas getting a lot of easy baskets, not only in their running game, but they're getting the ball inside and scoring in the paint. A lot of close-in shots for the Jayhawks. Brown picked up by Miles. Nelson out there for Utah State. Torino Johnson, Cardell Butler. Pusey out there. That's the group for the Aggies. Ten-point Kansas lead. Cardell Butler just coming off a terrific Big West tournament where he averaged 16 points per game through the course of the tournament. Heinrich has three points so far. Out there with Langford, Collison, Nash, Miles, and here's Collison kicking it back to Heinrich. Utah State still in the 2-3 zone. Really the only threat to shoot the ball from the perimeter. Langford can shoot it, but it's right there, Kirk Heinrich. Heinrich for three. And it gives the Jayhawks their biggest lead tonight, 30-17. It's Butler dumping it off inside to Nelson, going around the defensive now, so we're putting it in. Utah State. Utah State runs a variety of different sets. They're hard to prepare for because they run between 30 and 40 different sets. You can see those cards over on the sideline, how thick that stack is. Collison for two, shoved inside. And a foul in Kansas with inside play key. The points in the paint, Jay Billis, Jayhawks 18-6 in that category. Well, they look for Nick Collison along the baseline, and one of the things that makes Collison so hard to guard, not just that he is so skilled, but he runs the floor and he's always moving. And Kansas does a very nice job, whether it's against man defense or zone, of moving their big men from side to side, getting a lot of flash pivots, Interior screening where they can seal off and get great post position. Pusey knocks it off to Penninger, and here comes Utah State, now 32-19. Utah State having to start its offense so far out because of the good ball pressure of Kirk Heinrich and Aaron Miles. Notre Dame by seven, Duke by four. Other games in progress around the country, as you see. Penninger is hounded inside, he takes it outside. Three-point shot, the trap, a nice one was for Ronnie Ross. Greg Gumbel in New York, under five minutes to play. The Jayhawks with a 10-point lead on Utah State at 32 to 22. We'll keep tabs on what happens there. But meanwhile, in Salt Lake City, Duke with a five-point lead on the Rams of Colorado State. We join Dick Enberg, Matt Gukas, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Singular at the half. Singular's wireless polling allows you to get into the game. Hi once again, everyone. Greg Gumbel in New York. Welcome to Singular at the Half here at our studios in New York, along with my partner Clark Kellogg. At the break, the Duke Blue Devils leading Colorado State by a score of 36 to 30. And I made the comment to you as Every time Colorado State made a run, Duke came right back, and they are a relentless team offensively. Well, they keep the pressure on you defensively and offensively. They shoot the three. They get into the passing lanes. But Colorado State's big guys can shoot the ball, and that's why they're only down six right now. All right, Clark. Meanwhile, in Oklahoma City, Utah State is taking on the second seed, Kansas, in the West Region first-round action there. They're just underway in the second half. The Jayhawks now lead it by two, 34-32. Let's join Kevin Harlan and Jay Billis. Kansas has scored just two points in the last seven minutes. They're the number two seed in the West. They're in white. Aggies in blue, and they try the alley-oop. Butler getting it from Brown, and out of bounds it goes. Kansas has led 32-19. That has been their biggest lead in the contest. Ten from Langford, 12 from Penninger. Those are the two high scores both ways, and out of bounds it goes. But Penninger has just been terrific tonight. Desmond Penninger, two times all Big West, including this year, and the terrific pass inside and the nice finish by the big man. 
And right now, Kansas facing a very confident and very determined Utah State team. Utah State has never led. And it's the back of Langford. Heinrich is there to get it. There's Nick Collison. He drives inside and finds two. And he basically was untouched on that move. Doing a better job of driving the ball and able to hit the perimeter jumper. Utah State has had some upsets in their NCAA tournament pass. They beat Ohio State in 2001, a higher seeded Ohio State team in the tournament. That's pretty much the kind of play they're exhibiting tonight. Sound defense, some patient offense. If they can get things to fall, they'd be okay. They're only shooting 38% from the field and a foul. Nick Collison really is a triple threat when he catches the ball. He has the ability to hit from three-point range. Puts the ball on the floor and outstanding in the low post. As every post move in the book. A junior Kevin McHale in there. Yeah. Heiner just picked up his second foul for the Jayhawks. And about three minutes gone here in the second half. Brown was thinking about it. But how much more active has Utah State been in the second half? Just add a little more bounce to their step. Confidence. Johnson from outside. That is a three-point hit. And Utah State comes to within one. Langford across the lane, Miles on top. And the Jayhawks are feeling the pressure. A little swagger, you're right, now on the step of the Aggies. Back to a 2-3 zone after the made field goal. Trying to change things up, give different looks defensively. The first half, they had a little 1-2-2, three-quarter court pressure, tried to slow Kansas down, and the tempo has been all Utah State's. Miles for three. Rebound by Penninger, who continues to do it on both ends. 12 points and seven rebounds to Nelson at the other end. Lost it a turnover. And here's a two on two. Heinrich and Miles. Heinrich tried to spoon feed him, and Penninger gets in the way and gallops the other way for the Aggies into the defense. And a foul. Wipe it away and a foul on Penninger. Penninger got that shot to go down. It was. Appeared to be a late decision by the referee. I agree. Yeah, it took him some time to process it and Penninger picks up his second This Kansas team has not been sharp today at all and that last pass the turnover by Heinrich That was stolen by Pen Penninger a very weak pass and good job by Keith Lankford moving his feet to get in front of Penninger Penninger that is not the move. He needs to give that up to a guard. They worked too hard defensively. Kansas has gotten no second shots in the second half. It's been one look, and that is it. Langford at it. Go astray, picks it back up, and fires inside. And Langford has put in 12, and he leads the Jayhawks with that mark. Langford, the ability to get to the basket, to rise up and shoot over. is Cardell Butler. Heinrich is on him. They're going to try a trap with Miles. Brown, shot clock is at 12. They're just trying to increase the pressure. See if they can ratchet up the tempo that way. They lose it outside. Picked up by Heinrich. Quickly triggers to Miles. Gotta watch Collison here. Or Nash. They cover you in waves, and Brian Nash Hits that on the fly, and he's got six. And Utah State wants a timeout. It's been close as Stu Moyle tries to keep his team in this against KU. 1957 to play in the second half, and Kansas' lead over Utah State is 40 to 35. Continuing down the scoreboard in Indianapolis, Wisconsin Milwaukee is trailing Notre Dame, the number five seed in the West by two, 39-37. Let's take you to the RCA Dome. Gus Johnson and Leno will get you back there shortly, but first we want you to check in on what's happening in Oklahoma City, where Utah State has closed to within four of Kansas with nine and a half to play. Let's take you there. Kevin Harlan and Jay Billis. Penninger now 3 of 3 from the line, 2 seed Kansas, 15th seed Utah State, Kansas in the white, the Aggies in the blue, biggest lead for the Jayhawks, 13, we've got 9.31 to play here in the second half. Some outstanding individual performances, Penninger for the Aggies, 19 points, Langford for Kansas has 16 for the Jayhawks. 1-2-2. 
Half court trap. Langford flies inside. Can't get it to go. Michael Lee, a big offensive rebound. And the first one for Kansas in this half. And the first one in about 18 minutes. Right. Saved by Collison. Plenty of time on the clock. Langford leads the Jayhawks. He feeds on top to Heinrich. Screen by Collison. It has been a long time since Kansas has gone 18 minutes without an offensive rebound. Great interception by Penninger. And they got Ross who will bring it up. And Utah State, a team that has never led in this game, has a chance to tie and perhaps take the lead for the first time. We've had no ties in the game either. And this is not the Kansas team that I have known this season. Give Utah State credit for a terrific game plan executed very well on the floor. Ross for the tie. Rebound by Collison. And triggers it off to Heinrich ahead. Slashing to the rack is Langford. Counted for two. He's a blur as he went the other way. That is Kansas basketball. The fast break coming up the sideline. Running full speed, including the big men and passing ahead. And Keith Langford squaring himself to the basket using that left hand and finishing the play. Free throws tonight. Jayhawks are four of nine. And Utah State six of seven. Langford now is tied the 19 points of Penica. The better than the shootout here in Oklahoma City. Even though Kansas not in control of this ball game right now, you have to think that they've still got the ability to wear down this Utah State team. Brown to Nelson, Graves on him. They're trying to slip it into Penninger, and they do. Great double pump! Giving you a different move with every part of his body. And he's got 21 and brings the Aggies to within three. That was a spectacular move. Langford picks up his second foul. Desmond Penninger with over 20 points for the ninth time this season. And it's easy to see why he can put up those kind of numbers with the variety of moves he has put on the Kansas Jayhawks today. We're not talking about a slasher because his body would, would, would tell you that's not the kind of player he is. But we've seen those kind of moves tonight from him. It's a two-point game in Oklahoma City. State within two of the Kansas Jayhawks, the number two seed in the West region, largely because of the play of Desmond Penninger, the Big West Tournament MVP. He's been putting the ball on the floor, going around, bigger defenders, getting the ball inside, scoring with the left hand, and he's got the touch to finish plays even when he is being Fouled inside, and Desmond Penninger having another outstanding ball game. Eight of 14 from the field. Shea, he has scored the last eight points for Utah State, and 10 of the last 12. Aggies have never led, have never been tied in this game, and they trail by two right now. Here's Miles. Kirk Heinrich, by the way, has not scored in the last 18 minutes, 0 of 1. That is unheard of for this kid who has been spectacular his entire career at Kansas. Well, Torino Johnson's done a nice job on Heinrich, not letting him see, and Heinrich turns it over yet again. Uncharacteristic of the All-American. Chance to tie right here. Butler drives inside, can't get it to go. Graves digs it out. Langford and Collison have been the guys. They have scored 19 of the last 21 Kansas points. Here is the aforementioned Langford taking it inside. And Collison saves it, but gets it right back to Spencer Nelson. And the Aggies again with about seven to play in regulation. Down by two and a chance to tie or take the lead. And right now, Kansas is feeling some pressure because it has been one shot and out. There have been no second opportunities for the Jayhawks. It's Brown picked up by Miles. Shot clock is at eight. Nelson graves on him. They got a fire now. And for the lead on that three-point attempt, it will not go. The miss by Torino Johnson. Miles the other way. And the Jayhawks lead by four. Miles with that dislocated index finger on his shooting hand. 
Took a couple of big shots toward the end of the ball game against Missouri in the Big 12 tournament. Shots that Roy Williams would rather he didn't take considering the injury. And not a very good foul there by Jeff Graves. Graves picks up the foul. That's the third on him. On the break, Miles, the ability to pull up and hit that medium range jump shot. Miles has three, timeout taken by Kansas. The two seeded Jayhawks being shoved around by 15th seeded Utah State, the lead of four. A telecast of NCAA men's basketball tournament games are available online and on demand over the internet. To find out more, go to NCAAsports.com. Kevin Harlan, Jay Billis, Dwayne Ballard in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. No one expected this kind of game, but Utah State has come out and played second seed Kansas very well. Jayhawks have went by 13. Utah, Utah State has never led. Penninger has been a huge part of their success. He's got 22. And they go inside. Penninger can't get the miss. Nelson dies and puts it in. Another two-point game. Utah State is getting offensive rebounds, but not Kansas. And again, one shot only. Kansas rebounded five of its first nine misses in this ball game. Only one offensive rebound since. That's for the lead on the miss. And Heinrich gets it off on the ricochet of Cardell Butler. Here they go, folks. One of the interesting numbers. Four times the number 15 seed has defeated a two seed dating back to 85. The last time in 01 when Hampton took care of Iowa State. 1985 was when the NCAA tournament went to 64 teams. And Dick Tarrant of the Richmond Spiders, the one that started all this upset business, 15s over twos. We really haven't had a big upset in the tournament today. Pretty much has gone as planned, although that's an interesting Notre Dame, Wisconsin, Milwaukee score. And of course, the one here raising eyebrows around the country. They go inside, Miles to Collison. And Collison has put in 16 points. Nice assist by Miles. So active, and Collison provides a target, and he's an outstanding finisher. They trap Brown. Just gasping for air, they call the jump ball, the alternate possession. <laughs> that kid could not breathe. And Roy Williams and his staff up off of their bench, saying that wasn't a tied up ball, we took it. And he has a pretty darn good point here. I would agree. Brown has six turnovers himself tonight. That is tough. The turnover story, nine for Kansas, 12 for Utah State. Looked a lot more like a steal yeah. than a held ball. Jayhawks are shooting 53%, yet they only lead by four over the 15th seed. And Utah State shooting 41% for the game. Miles is open. Good job by Brown to yeah. help down on Collison. He'll give Miles that shot. He doesn't want to give Collison a post move. Brown on Miles. Graves tries to set a screen and does. Langford. Needed to pull the trigger right away. Penninger has it. Little hesitation by Langford. Rebounding Utah State is plus five and rebounding over the Jayhawks tonight. 30-25. Ball set. High screen by Penninger. Brown slashing inside and throws it up. It's another two-point game. Brown has done a great job of beating Kansas off the dribble. Six times Utah State has come to within two of the Jayhawks tonight. But they have not been able to tie and certainly get over the hump. Two times have come to within a point. The 2-3 zone. Stu Morrow been going to the 2-3 zone after a made field goal. Langford, great spin move inside. Spectacular play. Count it for two. Langford has been the guy. He's got 21 tonight. It has been all Langford and Collison in this ball game for Kansas. Langford gets to the basket. An uncanny knack. Puts the ball on the floor, able to spin, get away from the defense, and finish the play. Butler picks up his second team fouls. Utah State with six. The Jayhawks with six team fouls. 27 to play. Langford with 22, Penninger has got 22. Back and forth we go, Jayhawks now by five. Back in Oklahoma City, Kansas leads Utah State. Tonight's alternate official, 
Bruce Hicks has two sons serving in the military. One, Keith, in the Army in Kuwait. Marcus, the other, is in the Air Force in Germany. Now, Bruce was on the officiating crew on the floor in our earlier session for Oklahoma's win over South Carolina State. And his son, Marcus, the one in the Air Force in Germany, saw him, saw the game, called home to Walnut, California, told his mom it really gave him a huge lift to see dad and see his favorite sport, college basketball. And Bruce Hicks was all smiles when he was telling me about the story. Jay and Kevin. And we are too. Great story, Dwayne. Thank you very much. That's a Utah State miss. And here comes Heinrich the other way. He has not hit from the field in 19 minutes for Kansas. It's Collison inside, finding on Penninger, and that's a huge basket as the Jayhawks hit 60. They are the number three scoring team in America, and they are now just getting to 60 points. And that shows you the maturity of Heinrich and Collison. Heinrich did not have the, or Collison did not have the move right away, pitched it out, and got better post position as a result. Heinrich and Miles on the two on one, and Heinrich hits. And Kansas busting it open, leading by nine. Their biggest lead is then 13. They're on a 7 nothing run. And the capacity crowd filled with Jayhawk fans cheering on their second seed, Jayhawks. Nick Collison getting good post position down low, but not good enough. When he gets the ball, he doesn't like where he is, kicks it out to Heinrich and gets better position, gets an angle, and is able to get all the way to the basket. That is a mature post player. And Kansas, when they get in their running game, can be devastating. Utah State's taking them out of it, but that's how you get easy baskets, by doing hard things, and that is running the floor hard. Kansas has three timeouts. Utah State has two. Team foul, six apiece. We go inside to Nelson, guarded by Graves, and a foul by Graves. Graves now has four fouls, and let's check the CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Get complete tournament stats at cbssportsline.com and America Online, and our keyword, CBS Sportsline. Spencer Nelson, Utah State. Nelson at the line. Two of two tonight. Jayhawks have had a lead as great as 13 points. We've mentioned before Utah State has never led. And they haven't even tied. It's an eight-point game right now with 2.17 to play. What does Utah State have to do? They have to take better care of the basketball. The last few times down, they've taken quick shots, and they've turned it over. And this Kansas offense feeds off turnovers. Collison, 18. Langford has 22 for the Jayhawks, 22 for Penninger, and 10 for Nelson. Those are the game-high scores for both the Aggies and Kansas. Heinrich has struggled tonight, eight points. He came up with a big basket though seconds ago. Miles on top. He's got a night of three points and six assists. Kansas burning some clock now. They'll get into a set. Langford trying to carve his way inside. A foul on Langford as he tried to work. The winner of this game will move on and play Arizona State. Of course, Kansas looking at that, the possible matchups down the road should they win with Duke and Anaheim for that's uh, Arizona. I mean, it's a brutal West region. It really is. Illinois advancing today as well. Penninger for three. Rebound by Johnson. Out to Brown. Penninger will set a screen and over Miles. The three is down. And a timeout for Utah State. They will not go away. Down now by four with 124 left. Jay Villas, what's coming out of the mouth of Roy Williams? Well, right now, Roy Williams wants his team to take its time and make sure that they run something good out of this timeout. They have not done a good job most of the game in running their offense. And they need not only to burn some clock and use clock, but they've also got to get into a set and run it the right way. And Stu Morrow wants his team to guard. They can still get stops. No need to foul here. You want to play good, solid defense and make sure you clean it up with a defensive rebound. They've been doing it all game long, limiting Kansas to one shot. Utah State has come within one, twice, within two, six times. And Braves right there. Collison. Braves gets it back and banks it in. Maybe his biggest shot of the game. Braves now has seven after missing his last couple from in time. Utah State did a pretty good job getting Graves to miss, but they weren't able to clean it up with a defensive rebound. And a good for three. Good! 
right between the eyes. He puts it in, and he's got 25, and it's a three-point game. A huge bomb from outside. Who said this was a guards game? Three-quarter Utah State. Heinrich, Collison. Half minute to play in regulation. Langford leads the Hawks with 22. One possession game, Stu Morrill not going to foul. His team has guarded well all game long. Oh, what a knock away by Nelson. Shot clock at two. Picked up, here goes Cardell Butler. And from behind, Miles and Heinrich foiled the drive with 10 seconds to play and a Kansas three-point lead. What an incredible job Stu Morrill has done. Timeout taken. Utah State is out of timeouts now. Kansas, with the game on the line, gets it inside to Graves, and Desmond Penninger unable to come up with the rebound. Collison keeps it alive, and the Kansas bench, sensing they may have the game, but Desmond Penninger says, you've got two? Well, how about three? The big guy steps back, Collison unable to get to him, and he knocks it down from deep. 10 seconds, 10.3 to be exact, and Utah State will inbound. Here's Penninger for the tie. Gets it back. Lost it inside. And this, Butler for the tie. And that's it, and Kansas has survived, and they will advance. What a scare put into a goal by Stu Morrill and the Aggies of Utah State. A fantastic game. Penninger finishes with 25 points and eight rebounds. Langford for 22 and the Kansas winning cards. Not a particularly good look at first by Penninger, but a terrific pass by Nelson to get it out. And another good look by Butler. They had their chances and Cardell Butler just couldn't get it to go down. Nice shot fake to get the defense to go by. And Utah State gave it everything they had, laid their hearts on the floor. The Jayhawks win it 64 to 61. They will advance. They haven't lost an opening round game in 19 straight NCAA tournament appearances dating back to March of 78. So Kansas will play 10 seed Arizona State on Saturday. Desmond Penninger with 25, Keith Langford 22. For Jay Billis, Wayne Ballin, Kevin Harlan saying so long, and Craig Gumbel, what a day here in Oklahoma City as we send it to you in New York. All right, thank you guys. Meanwhile, in Indianapolis, there as you see the final score, Kansas 64-61. In Indianapolis, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and Notre Dame. It's a one-point lead for the Panthers, under two minutes to play. We join Gus Johnson and Len Elmore. 58 remaining in the second half. Milwaukee has Notre Dame on the road up by one and it's been a battle of wills who can execute on the offensive end who can play the defense and string together a bunch of stops on the defensive end up and down all evening here's Quinn looking for Thomas nine to shoot Cornette Miller six to shoot Miller fires and air ball right out of bounds Wisconsin-Milwaukee took the lead on this three here. It was all about execution. Clay Tucker, best player on Wisconsin-Milwaukee, drives baseline, draws the defenders to an open Jason Frederick. And that's what we mean by execution. The team that executes flawlessly gets themselves in a position for a good shot or gets to the free throw line down the stretch will be victorious. Here's Tucker along with Lettenberger, Ronnie Jones, Jason Frederick, and Dillard Payne. Of course, you got to make the free throw, which we've seen is not a gimme or a lock throughout today. There's a pick and roll, Jones, with five to shoot, inside, Page. Oh, it spins out. And the rebound. And they call it a jump ball. The possession arrow favors Notre Dame with 53.8 to go. Wow. The winner of this game will take on the Fighting Illini on Saturday. Chris Thomas. 
27 points. Playing in his hometown of Indianapolis. Crossover dribble. Down the lane. Dumps it down. Cornet. Great catch. Can't get it to go. Francis is there. He lays it up and in. And the Irish reclaim the lead. 30 seconds left. Shot clock turned off. And Bruce Pearl right now is not going to call a timeout. He's going to let the clock run down. He's going to give it to their best player, Clay Tucker, the creator, and see what happens. We yeah. talked about defense. One stop is all Notre Dame needs. One basket is what Tucker needs. Eight to go. High drama in Indy. Tucker down the lane. Lays it up. Bang. Oh, he missed the layup. Holy mackerel. Heartbreak City for Milwaukee. Everything worked. Bruce Pearl put it in the hands of his best player. Wanted him to create for himself or someone else. You can't get any better than this. Oh, my. Another look once again. Tucker going to his left. Francis come. Defenders. And Dylan Page. That's the second layup he's missed in the last 54 seconds. And Chris Thomas may have gotten a hand on it. But here's the winning basket. Durant Francis working hard inside. Well, he certainly was, and he's done that all evening. Durant Francis, 23 points, 14 rebounds. An inside presence Notre Dame sorely needed. Notre Dame survives and advances. 70 to 69, and that sets up one of the great point guard matchups of the tournament, Dee Brown versus Chris Thomas on Saturday.